Hi you guys! Welcome to my channel today. My name is Donna and this is Donna Loves Yarn because I do. Today is April 17th, 2024. Um, for all of the, those of you who have never been here before, welcome. This channel is all about yarn and crochet. Sometimes in that order. So I want to welcome you all, new and existing or returning. Um, yeah, this is like all of my videos, it's very unscripted, so you know, it's just stuff off the top of my head. But it's been a little while since I put up a video, so I thought that I would come on and say hi and catch up on some things going on. I've just been really busy crocheting and um, making bread. So um, yeah, I'm going to catch up on all of that today. Uh, to all of my new subscribers, welcome. I appreciate you joining. Um, I hope you stick around and enjoy your time here. Uh, I try to make it as entertaining as possible for, you know, what I can offer in, in this current time. It's still a pretty new channel, so um, really it's what you see is what you get. I do very little editing. Um, it's just me talking to you and sharing my love of this craft crochet and and the yarn world so uh, with that being said let me get to um, what's going on today um, where should I start let's see I mentioned bread so um, I'm a sourdough baker I've, I've kind of uh, slacked off a little bit on it I was uh, doing sourdough, this is one of my shirts, I was doing sourdough basically for a living there for about three years. Um, I was a vendor at a summer, spring and summer market every year, uh, and I was also a participating vendor in a year-round market that is run by my sister. Well, I moved in November, and now I don't have the space, really, to be doing bread in large quantities. So, my bread journey has kind of come to an end as far as, you know, making bread in large quantities. And by large, I mean I was probably, I don't know, my, my biggest... My biggest make for bread for one event was probably, counting everything, I don't know, maybe 30. Including, you know, I would do loaves, I would do, I've done cinnamon rolls, I've done sweet rolls, I've done pizza dough. I've done all kinds of stuff with sourdough. Um, and it kept me really, really busy. As a matter of fact, I had an Etsy store there for about two years, year and a half, two years, that kept me extremely busy. So um, that got to be a bit much. So that came to an end before I even moved. It was just too much. So um, I have somebody that goes to my sister's market on a regular basis and he really enjoyed my bread so every once in a while he'll reach out to me and ask me if I'll bake for him about every two or three weeks so he reached out I don't know several days ago and I I told him at the time he messaged me I said it's too late for me to start it now for you to get it this that next weekend so I said I'll start it next week and you can have I'll have it ready for you the following weekend so um, today is Wednesday, 
So I fed my starter, I believe, Monday night. Um, or was that Sunday? Might have been Sunday, because I fed it twice. Sunday night I fed it, and then Monday night I fed it. And I forgot to feed it last night. I meant to. I didn't really need to, but I changed my mind on starting dough at night because it's getting warmer and I didn't want to risk it overproofing. So I changed my mind and decided I'd start dough in the daytime. So I should have fed it again last night, but it's fine. I've, I've done that before. Um, if you have an established starter, um, I mean really established, you don't have to feed it, or you don't have to use it before it falls. If it's really good and active, you can use it even 24 hours after your, after your last feeding, which is what I did. So um, I started dough this afternoon around noon, I think. Yeah, about noon I started dough. And I had enough starter to make four loaves. Initially I was only going to do two, one for me and one for the customer. But I thought, I'll go ahead and do a third and, you know, see if any of my previous customers would be interested. And I had just enough starter after that third to make a fourth. So I made four and reached out to um, one of my local customers that um, really likes the bread and asked her if she wanted one. She said, are you just doing the classic white? Or are you doing any any cheese bread? I said, just classic for now. Well, at the time, all I had done is my initial mix. So I thought, I'll just cut up some cheese and throw it in. It's not too late to do that. So I told her, I can go ahead and, and throw some cheese in and make you a cheese bread. She said, could I do both? I said, I have two extra batches, so yeah. So I've got two, actually three loaves sold, um, and then one for me. Um, so those are proofing as we speak, and I don't know what the temperature is in here, but I'm sure it's, well, I turned the air on. I didn't want to, but it was like 88 in the house. It was like 88 two nights ago. I'm just sitting here crocheting and I'm sweating. So, and you know yarn and sweat don't mix. So it was like either turn the air on or I got to stop working with my yarn. So I went in and turned it on and I think it's at 76. That's what I got it set at. So, and it's supposed to be in the 80s today. So with that, it should proof definitely before I go to bed tonight. I'm usually up till way past midnight. So um, I'll get those shaped, put into Bannetons proofing baskets, get them in the fridge, and then uh, they'll bake sometime between now and Saturday. So I've got that going on. Um, you know, along with the crochet projects. So uh, something else that happened, and it, it happened the first time about, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. Um, I went and took a shower, and as I'm, t as I'm in the shower, I've noticed the water was not as hot. So I thought, what in the world's going on? Um, and I've had trouble with the... Uh, there's a word for the regulator that's in the shower uh, apparatus. Mixing valve. I had trouble when we first moved in with that mixing valve. So that was fixed. So I thought, well, maybe the mixing valve is messing up again. So as soon as I got out of the shower, I turned on the sink hot. It wasn't, it was the same temperature as the shower. So I knew something was up. Well, it's been years since I've had to deal with a gas hot water heater. And gas scares me as much as electricity does. Maybe more. Because gas can blow up. Electricity can't really blow up. I mean it can, but not like gas. 
So uh, I went downstairs, I'm thinking, I can't light it, I don't even have any matches. So I went downstairs and looked at it, and there's a little, I mean, the size of this window is probably the diameter of a dime. No more than the diameter of a dime. And it's not very clear. So I look in there and I don't see a flame. And I did a YouTube video to see how to address lighting the pilot light. Fortunately, my water heater has an igniter. So I didn't need any matches or light. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm watching the video and figured out how to do it. So I followed the directions and hit the igniter, looked down in the little window, no flame. So I did it again, hit the igniter. The second or third time I did that, it lit. Well, that's been two or three weeks ago. We've had no problem. Last night I was doing dishes and I noticed, and usually the kitchen sink is hot, 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 really hot, hotter than the shower. So I thought, oh great, the pilot light went out again. So I went downstairs, got down on the floor, and here I am, 62 years old, and I'm getting down on a hard concrete floor. And you got to get all the way down where your head's on the floor to see in this little window, right? So imagine me doing that. So, of course, it wasn't lit. So I went through the steps again to try to light it. It wasn't lighting. So by that time, it's like, I don't know, it was like 9.30, I think, 9 or 9.30 last night. My son gets home about 10.30, so I said, said to myself, self, wait till Sam gets home and he can help you get it lit. He can get down on the floor and watch for the pilot light. So that's what we did. And it took a couple of times to press that igniter, but the pilot lit. Mind you, he works, he has a very dirty job. He comes home filthy, oily, greasy, dirty, 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 very dirty. So he, he showers every night when he gets home, unless he's had a light day, and then he'll wait until morning, which he really should shower every night. Anyway, so I felt bad that now he couldn't take a shower because the water wasn't hot enough. I mean, he could have, but, you know, it would have been probably cool by the time he finished, which, you know, what's the big deal? Anyway, we got it lit, and he went to bed, didn't take a shower. First thing I did this morning was turn on the hot water in the bathroom. Nothing. Wasn't cold yet, but it was definitely uh, tepid. Not hot enough to take a shower. So no shower this morning either. So last night, thankfully, this is these are the times I'm thankful that I'm renting. So I put in a maintenance request last night. I have a little app that I do that on. And I get a message this morning um, that someone with heating and cooling is coming between 2 and 6 today. So he showed up, and I thought, all we need probably is a new thermal couple. Well, he shows up. He goes down there, and he looks at it. Thankfully, he's, he's done this kind of work for like 30 years. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was talking about. You know, he wasn't going to just put a Band-Aid on it and say, okay, you're good to go. No, he looked in there, and there's a leak. And it made sense that there's a leak because I've seen water, a trail of water from the water heater to my, my clothes washer. The water heater is directly behind, not directly, but it's behind my clothes washer. And I almost always see this trail of water. 
and you can see, you can tell by the floor, because there's watermarks on the painted concrete floor, paint has come up, chipped off, and you can just tell that there's an outline of water that has been there in the past. So I'm like, you know, light bulb, that makes a lot of sense. How long has this thing been leaking? He showed me the picture of the pan that sits above the pilot. It was completely rusted. Just completely rusted. I thought for a minute, too, that I saw mold growing, but I could have... I saw spots on the rust. I don't... He didn't mention mold, but that makes sense, too, right? That there could have been mold growing there. So, anyway... He said, I'll go ahead and send these pictures and blah, blah, blah. It's up to, you know, it's up to whoever to, to approve replacing it. So, oh, great. So now I got to wait for my landlord who lives in California to approve replacement of this water heater, which I'm sure is not cheap to do. Um... Knowing him, he'll try to find somebody that has a refurbished water heater and put that in. Knowing him, that's what he'll do. Meanwhile, he lives in California in a million dollar house. So, um, anyway, now I sit and wait. and It's, thir it's Wednesday. Weekend's coming. Hopefully I have a water heater by the weekend. I really hope so. I need a shower. My son's going to need a shower. I don't know how he feels about taking a cold shower. I don't mind too awful much taking a cold shower, especially when it's 80 degrees out. Um, I've done it. It's been a long time since I've done it, but I've done it. So, we've got that drama going on. Great, right? Um, okay, so... On the brighter side, um, I've got four loaves of bread going, proofing. So those will be ready to go, like I said, into the fridge tonight to bake later on in a couple of days. I could bake mine tomorrow if I wanted to. But the longer it's in the fridge, the better it is. So, okay. Um, any more life stuff going on? Oh! Yeah, maybe. Um, I've talked on my channel before, I think, about the neighbor's dog. Maybe not. I can't remember if I have. So our neighbor has this dog. He looks to be part Shiba Inu to me. He's a fence jumper. Mind you, the fences are only... The fence between our yards... And to my, well, all around my perimeter, the, the fence is only like four feet high. It's a very short fence, chain link. This dog jumps over all the time. And that's fine. I, I don't really mind because he and Goober get along just fine. I'm going to turn this a little bit more this way. He and Goober get along and they play and they have a good old time. So... Um, I don't really mind it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I toyed with the idea of asking them if they would just want us to take the dog because one time the woman of the house came over to get him and she just kind of, you know, half-heartedly said, you want a dog? If she'd never said that, I probably wouldn't have thought about it. So anyway... How many days ago was it? I don't know. It was, it was last weekend. Dog jumps over <clears throat> the fence, and I think he was on the cable. They, ha they have him cabled now to a tree that's like two feet away from the fence. So, of course, he's still going to jump. He's just not going to jump and go far. He'll jump over into my yard, and that's as far as he'll go. So, my son goes out there, and puts him on our cable and brings him in the house. I'm in my bedroom. He brings him in the house to my room. 
Mom, are you decent? Yeah. So opens the door. Here's Zeus. His name is Zeus. He's a pretty dog. Um, he's got one blue eye, one brown eye. So I think he's part husky. Um, and part Shiba Inu is my guess. Maybe a little shepherd. I don't know. So he's just the sweetest. He's, he was very timid in the beginning. He was very leery of people. Didn't like to be pet much. But now that we've been petting him and he comes in, I've, I've let him in a couple times, you know, and he knows that he's welcome here and he can eat and he can drink and he gets pet. And so, you know, he's come around quite a bit. And um, I guess we've talked to her about him before or my son has talked to her and she leads us to believe that he marks all over the place. Well, he's neutered. I don't think he marks at all. Because the times that he's come in here, if he's a dog that wants to mark, he's going to be hiking his leg on everything new. Because Goober lives here. He's going to want to be hiking his leg everywhere Goober's been. He doesn't do that. So my guess is he's just not housebroke over there. Um, there's some activity going on over there. Um, do I want to say what the activity is? They smoke a lot of weed. So that poor dog is around that smell all the time. But these people, all they sit around and do is do that. So they're not going to let him out when he needs to go out. Because he jumps. So he pees in the house. I'm sure that house just reeks. I'm sure. So he came over here. He got up on my bed. I invited him. So it's not like he's used to doing that. I invited him up. He jumped up. Sweet as can be. So he hung out here for a while. Um, never hiked his leg once. The first time he came in, he piddled a little bit on the kitchen floor, but I don't think he was marking. I think he was just excited. So anyway, um, my son went over that day and took Zeus back over there, and, and the guy, the adult man that lives there, I guess, I have so many people living there, I don't, I can't keep track of who all lives there. There's like four cars that come and go all the time. So anyway, he went over there and, and my son asked the guy, you know, would you consider letting him go? And he said, well, I'll, I'll talk to the woman of the house. Well, we've never heard anything back. So either he didn't talk it over with her or she decided against it. I don't know. She hasn't said anything. So maybe this weekend um, my son will go over there and talk to them again. I don't know. I wouldn't mind having him, you know. Goober loves him. They get along really well. I just, I don't know how he would do, you know, if I were to leave or how he would do while we're sleeping. I don't know. Um, and Sam would have to train him, you know, not to jump the fence. Anyway. That's the end of the life update because we're already at 23 minutes. So let me share some projects with you. I'm waiting for the mail. So I'm supposed to be getting something in the mail today. And I don't know what it is. I'm hoping that I think it is what I'm hoping it's what I think it is. But I don't know. It's coming from New York. As far as I know, I don't have anything ordered uh, except for one thing, and from my understanding, it just left China. So how could it already be in New York? I'll cover that in a minute. So I want to show you some things that I've finished and some things that I'm working on. So this may be a little longer video. I would love it if you'd watch the whole thing. Before I move on to that, 
remember that I have, and I shouldn't say it, but I will, I have a giveaway going on. So if you're interested in participating in that, you have to be a subscriber. I, I neglected to mention that in the actual video. The video is not titled anything with the word giveaway, but it's the one, I believe it's the one I did before this. Um, I think it was titled something like, thank you to you all, or something like that. So I have that giveaway going on for another week. Yep. So go go subscribe and participate in that giveaway. It's going to be a shawl giveaway. And all the information is in that video. Um, but I've got some finished objects here and some whips. And then I'll discuss what I'm expecting in the mail. So we'll start with the oldest thing first. This was a late, well, it's all, it's all a labor of love, right? But my, my only baby sister, I'm eighth of nine children, so my only baby sister is turning 60, well, she just turned 60, um, two days ago, on the 15th, tax day. She was born on tax day, of all days. So, she's the last one of us to turn 60. And it is our tradition that everybody, at least the girls, there's seven girls, the girls get a crown. I don't remember how long ago we started this tradition, but it's been going on for a little while. So, I took it upon myself to make her a crown. And I know she's not going to watch this. She doesn't know I have a gym. So, I still have ends to sew in. And I have some things to do to it still. But here's the crown. This is a Jada in Stitches pattern. I think she'll love it. I'm going to... I'm supposed to have some charms to put on here, but I don't know where to go to get charms where I don't have to pay buku bucks for one or buku bucks for 50 that I only need one. I don't know where to go to get them. So if anybody knows where I can go get charms, a bunch of different kinds of charms, because they have to be specific to the person. You know, so she's a Chiefs fan. Uh, she she loves candy corn. Candy corn is a big thing. Um, there's a couple other things that are just her. But um, hopefully I can get some, some charms that I can add to this. But if not, it's cute the way it is. I at least need a charm that says 60, you know, and put that on there. And then I'm either going to do some ties or an elastic so that it'll stay. That's really cute. And it's got the sequins. I did the band with some sequin yarn. So Chief's Colors. That was intentional. So that's my sister's birthday crown. That's been done for a while, but I just blocked it. So the next thing is, and now i got to remember what this is called. I can't remember what this is called. It's a shawl. And this is from Mariana Muller, Mueller. And... It's just really pretty. It's kind of on the small side. It's more of a chalet. But you guys, this is almost all single crochet. Which is why it's so pretty. I mean, it, it almost looks knit. If you didn't know, 
you'd think it was knit, I think, when you first saw it. But see this? This is short rows on both sides. It's my first time doing short rows. Short rows. And then the border was my idea. The border was supposed to be um, where the short rows meet. It was supposed to be uh, cro our single crochet two together. Um, you know, because you've got that jag where your short rows overlap. I decided to instead of doing the crochet single two together I just did a chain. I think I did a chain two skip two and then attached the chain to the third stitch and then on the way back I did a uh, double crochet uh, fan. Is it a fan? Anyway, it's pretty. And then I blocked it and I pinned it so it would be pointy. And this is an Expression Fiber Arts yarn. Very first time using it. Um, these, both of these are from KNC, I believe, and it's a merino nylon blend. And then this last one is from um, Hobby Lobby. It's an authentic hand dyed in beetroot. I just think it's really pretty. You still have to sew the ends in. I think that's really nice. Isn't that nice? Where's the top? I want to wear it. Okay. There we go. Alright. So there's that. And then the next thing that I finished this is called Artfully Simple Angled Scarf. Now, when I went to my local yarn store to pick up that dyed yarn, oh, I don't think I showed it to you. I should go get it. I'm gonna go get it and show it to you. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I went and had some yarn dyed by a local yarn dyer. So I went to go pick it up and here it is. You're not really even going to be able to tell the real color but it's like a forest green. Jody, if you're watching, this is what I was going to use to make your shawl but I think it's too dark. It's beautiful. The colorway is called basil and it's showing up a little bit dark on my screen, I think, but it's gorgeous. It's tonal. It's so pretty. Um, and this is like a, this is a two weight, I'd say. So anyway, when I went to go pick this up, they had a scarf um, displayed on a mannequin and it caught my eye and I said oh gosh that's pretty and I started looking at it and the woman that owns the shop said oh well there should be a pattern on there um, and she thought it was free but it wasn't it was five dollars but you know I want to support local so I went ahead and bought the pattern not knowing that I already had the video tutorial saved on my YouTube playlist. I already had it saved. And when I went to the uh, sipping shop, sipping, sipping shop? Yeah. When I went to the sipping shop that was sponsored by the gal that does the dyeing and the owner of the yarn store, 
somebody was wearing it and I admired it. That's how I initially found it. I was admiring the scarf and the woman I was sitting next to knew what pattern it was. So she showed it to me and so I've had it since then, like a year ago. So I bought the pattern. That's okay. I've got it. And this is that same beetroot yarn that's in the other shawl. And I thought that's the perfect yarn for this shawl or scarf. It's really a scarf, but it could be a shawl or a wrap. But it's, um, yeah, it's angled. So it's kind of hard to illustrate it like this, but this end goes this way and then the other end goes that way. So I know there's a word for that. I'm not sure what the word is. Um, but there's a picture. And it is by, uh, it's a moogly pattern, Tamara Kelly. So this, this blocked and dried in no time. And it worked, I did this in one day. I started it late afternoon and finished it that night. It works up super fast. It's not super long, but I think it's long enough. You know, you can wear it like a scarf. It's wide enough. You could wear it, you know, like a shawl if you wanted to. Um, but it's so pretty. It's really pretty. So I'm glad I made that. So glad I decided to make another one. And I chose this yarn because really it's a, it's a one skein project or one hank project. So, you know, it's perfect for, for you if you have, you know, one hank of yarn that you don't know what you're going to do with. 400 yards, 400 plus yards. You can make one of those. And it's on, it's on YouTube, Artfully, Artfully Simple Angled Scarf. And it's super easy. Super, super easy. Two row repeat. Actually, each row is basically the same, but where you're putting your double crochets changes each row each of two rows one row you're putting the double in front of a double crochet and the next row you're doing a double crochet and then you're putting the next one next to it so that that causes the the angle that creates the angle so anyway, I had this lone hank of Merino Cloud in a color that I really don't, I really can't match with something else. So I decided I'm just going to make another one of those scarves. And this may very well be for another sister who loves earth tones. And um, she's got a birthday next month. And we're meeting in Des Moines next month to celebrate the 60-year-old birthday. But I'm sure we'll celebrate the other birthday as well because her birthday is like two days. Let's see. Yeah, I think her birthday is two days after we arrive, if I'm not mistaken. And then Mother's Day is right after that. So anyway, I'm going to be taking all kinds of shawls with me. Everybody's getting a shawl. So anyway, I just started this. And like I said, it's so easy. And here's the yarn. It's basically um, kind of like olive drab greens. And I mean, it's different shades of green. There's, there's a darker green. There's like a gray green. It almost looks gray, but it's not. It's, they're greens, and she likes green. So I'll be able to finish that well before our Des Moines trip, and she'll get that. So I'm working on that. Um, and then the next one that I'm working on, I just started this yesterday. I've got this yarn, and let me show you the, the whole... Hank here. 
Does anybody recognize that? That's a KNC from Joann's. This came out last year when they first launched these Hanks. Um, this is 100% cotton, 472 yards. This is called Raspberry. And it's just a beautiful orange and pink yarn. It's just beautiful. And I've been wanting so badly to make something with this. Um, I really wanted to make a t-shirt. But I keep getting intimidated. Because it has to be raglan. I don't want to attach sleeves. I just want a one-piece construction. So if any of you have any ideas of you know, a top I can make with a one weight yarn for summer, let me know because I really want to make one, but it, I can't, I can't, I don't want to have to sew sides up and I don't want to have to add sleeves because if there's no, I've talked about this before, if there's no defined stitch for me to go into, I'm going to mess it up. I'm just going to mess it up. It's too stressful for me and crochet is not supposed to be stressful. So raglan is, for me, the way to go, so I can work in the round. So anyway, that's the yarn, and the pattern is from K-A-M-E Crochet, and it is called the, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's the Ryway or Raywe Shawl. Right away, it's really cool. Here's a picture of it. It's just a rectangular wrap, and it's got sections, and it's really cool. It's really cool. I'm enjoying it a lot, and here's what we got so far. Um, I am hoping I have enough of this white because this white came from, uh, it's a Stenley yarn. I don't have anything else like it. It's like a one weight cotton. So I'm hoping I have enough of the white. So you have two sections. You have the cluster section and then you have the puff stitch section and you repeat those the length of the wrap. And between each section, you have the double crochet and the, the windows rows. So, you know, it's only three rows between each section. Um, so hopefully I have enough. I'm hoping I do. I considered doing it in black. But being a summer wrap, I don't think black would be a good idea. I even considered doing white and then black, white and then black. I don't think that would be a good idea. I think it'd be cool, but I don't think it'd be a good idea. So, isn't that cute? I think that's adorable. So it goes this way, and I'm, work, I'm working this way. This is already done, so I'm working this way. But there's close up. I love these colors together. I'm just crazy about these colors together. Love it. And I've got four more hanks of it. Four more hanks of that. So, I don't know when that'll be done. I'm not in a huge hurry for it. But it's easy. It's pretty mindless. Um... I really don't even have to look at the pattern anymore, although now I'm at a section where you still have to keep track of the rows because it says, you know, from this row to this row you do section one, from this row to this row you do section two, this row to this row, section one. So you go back and forth the whole length of the wrap and then you add um, that cute little border on each end. That's adorable. That's really cute. So that'll be fun. I'm getting warm. Whew. All right. Um, so that's what I'm working on. 
that's what I'm working on. Um, I still have crystals, crochet along going on, and I haven't touched them because I got so disgusted with doing it with the yarn art flowers I just got so disgusted that I put it up and I, I still haven't had any desire to go back to it um, my friend Vicki said <clears throat> that the heavier the heavier yarn version which this one I've only done I've only done the first section or no, I started, I started the second section, but I, I couldn't keep up. I was doing them simultaneously. Um, but she said the thicker yarn, the popcorn row and the row after that are easier with the thicker yarn. So I may just continue this one and either frog that one or figure something else out. I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to frog it back to the popcorn row instead of popcorns do bobbles because I'll know how to single crochet into a bobble. That'll be easier for me, I think. And knowing that I have to stitch into the bobble, I can keep that in mind and not do it very tight. So I'll eventually pick it back up, eventually. And then I've got an Expression Fiber Arts shawl that I'm working on too that I haven't picked up in a while. But for now, you know, I just want something easy. I think we all go through that. You know, where we want something challenging, where, you know, that drives us to do something challenging. And then sometimes we just want simple and fast and brainless, mindless. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. I just want something mindless and easy that I can just sit and you know watch TV and stitch on it and it's easy it's just easy so that's what's going on excuse me um, okay so now about the mail um, for those of you who uh, do Tunisian crochet or know about Tony Lipsy TL yarn crafts uh, back in February, she did a video <clears throat> reviewing a Tunisian crochet hook set from AliExpress. That, that product just blew up. Everybody and their mother and their brother wanted that set because she raved about it. Raved about it. Well... You know, I didn't act on it right away. And by the time I did, they weren't available. They were on pre-order. So I went ahead and pre-ordered. Paid for it and everything. Pre-ordered it. And that was February 25th was when I ordered it. And here we are, April, what did I say? 18th, 17th. Um, and it just shipped. It was just released to the carrier. So, um, they have a tracking number, but it starts with an 8. So, I have this app called Aftership, and I put the tracking in there, but you have to pick the carrier. I don't know what the carrier is. So, if any of you have ordered that and you know who the carrier is, let me know so that I can add it to my Aftership with the correct carrier because I don't know with that being said I received notification that I have something coming in the mail it was shipped on or on the 14th it was in New York so my question is is that my hook set I don't know it's not the same tracking number but I imagine that the tracking number the shipment from China is when once it gets over here, USPS is going to take it, right? 
again, if any of you have, have received this, let me know if you received it USPS. So my guess is that it gets, it gets sent over to USPS, who then delivers it. That's my guess. And maybe AliExpress was just delayed in telling me that it shipped. I don't know. I don't know what this thing is coming from New York. I don't have anything else ordered that I know of. I don't know. So now I sit and wait for the mail. Um, and then speaking of mail, I sold a shawl to one of my subscribers and Saturday I received an email from Informed Delivery and it showed a picture of a personal letter. Well, I didn't look at the image. I'm just assuming that it's her check. She sent me a check. So I expected that check to show up Saturday afternoon sometime. It never did. I never got... Did I get mail that day? I didn't get any mail that day. So I, I'm waiting. So Monday comes around. I get one piece of mail on Monday. I got no mail yesterday. So I emailed her and I said, do you want to wait another few days or do you want to send another check? So she emailed me and said um, that she'd rather do it PayPal. Well, I'm leery of PayPal. I don't like to use it. The only time I use it is um, to make Etsy payments because that's really the only way that I think that's the only option if you buy something from Etsy is you got to use PayPal, I think. Or no, Ravelry. Ravelry. That's the only way you can buy a Ravelry pattern is with PayPal. So, I ha you know, when I wanted to buy a pattern from there, I had no choice but to reestablish a PayPal account, which I really didn't want to do. But anyway, so I emailed her back. I gave her my PayPal email address, and we'll see if we just do it that way. I don't think that letter's coming. Cheryl, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I don't think that letter's coming. I think that, you know, I think you should put a stop payment on it because there are scammers out there who will take your check, and somehow they wash the ink off, and they make it out to them. So... For those of you, this is a PSA, for those of you who use checks, here's what you need to do. You need to use a sharp point sharpie, those real fine point sharpies, to write your checks with. Because they can't, they can't mess with that. They can't manipulate or wash that ink. I learned that a long time ago, and I need to start doing that. I haven't even done that myself. But that is one way to... Uh, Keep your checks safe. Even pay any utility bill. People can intercept those checks. They know there's a check in there. And they can wash that check. And before you know it, your bank account's empty. So, word to the wise, including to myself. Use those fine point sharpies um, to make out a check. To keep yourself safe. So, okay, I think that's all I have. No, I have one more thing. Of course, of course I do. Um, so it's funny to me, I've talked about the uh, KNC yarn from Joanne. They have launched new colors of not only the cotton, I've talked about this before. They have brand new cotton. And they have four or six new one weight merino nylon blend hanks. The merino nylon are listed on the same page as the 100% superwash merino in a three weight. I mentioned this in another video, 
and somebody commented to that video and said, thank you so much for telling me. Because unless you go through and you read the description of those yarns, you're not going to know. You're going to assume one or the other. Either it's a three weight and it's 100% superwash, or all of them are one weight. Because there's only four or six that they've added to that. And they're at the very top. If you go to look at all the colors, you click more, all of the one weights are at the top. And I, I want to say there's six. But only one is available. And that is the Happy Highlighters. That's the only one that shows in stock. Now for the cotton, there was like 20 colors. A whole lot of colors. And they're beautiful. I didn't count them, but I bet you it's about 15 or 20 colors. Well, I go back every once in a while because I know that there were only four colors that would show in stock. So every once in a while I'd go and I'd check because I'm assuming that maybe they're going to release them for the spring and summer season. But now that Joann's is going through bankruptcy, maybe they've changed their mind on that. Um, so... I went and looked again last night, and I got paid early, so I decided, okay, I'm going to order some of these colors. And again, nobody's talking about them. Creative Grandma, Glenda at Creative Grandma, is the only one that I found that has put a video up about these yarns. And I'm, she bought all four colors. So, and I'm thinking that they're softer than this last batch of cotton. From the looks of her hanks, they look softer, so I'm anxious to see. Um, but anyway, I went ahead yesterday, um, was it yesterday or the day before, and ordered all four colors, three of each color. Um, and I believe I had, was it a free shipping? It was a free shipping coupon. No, because I ordered enough, I got free shipping anyway. Um, they were 25% off, anyway, of all yarn, so I got them at 25% off. Um, those have already shipped. So, and at that time, all the colors were showing. So, their confirmation email had a coupon on it, it said claim coupon, so I clicked on the coupon, went back to the website. Now, they've only got the four colors showing. They took off all the other colors. Only four colors are showing. So I don't think they're going to offer any more. But this is beautiful yarn. One weight cotton. If you guys love... Uh, um, oh my gosh. I'm drawing a blank. On her name that loves to work with one weight yarn. Oh my gosh! I'm not even gonna say the channel, because now I feel bad that I don't remember her name. Oh my, Tracy. Tracy at I Love Loopy's Crochet and Treasures. Tracy, you should get your hands on these and do some reviews. I'm gonna tag her channel. Tracy, you should grab some of these and do some reviews and make a beautiful shawl. Because that's what I'm going to do. Might even make a blanket. I don't know. But you should definitely get your hands on some of these beautiful one-weight cotton. Beautiful. They make a beautiful shawl. Um, any, of you, any of you who like the one-weights, I strongly recommend. Because once they're gone, they're probably gone. They're probably not going to release any more. It's probably safe to say they're not going to release any more. And then remember, if you look at the other Hanks that um, say that they're 100% Superwash Merino, remember the first row and then half the next row, those are all one weight. They're beautiful colors, beautiful. Um, but they're not 100% Superwash Merino. They're Merino 
nylon blends. The rest of them, which is the majority of those colors, the rest of them are three weight, 100% superwash merino, which I've talked ad nauseum about on my channel. And those are nice, nice yarns. Great to work with. Soft, squishy, and just great. So I recommend those two. I recommend all of those Hanks uh, from KNC. You, you will not be sorry if you order any of them. They're awesome. And I'm anxious to get the cotton because I think they're probably softer. So I think with all of that being said, I think I am done. Um, it's almost 6 o'clock here in Missouri. Uh, there was a tornado not too far from here yesterday in a town called Smithville, Missouri. And that's about, oh, I don't know, probably 45 minutes from here. North, west, northwest of here. Um, it was like an EF1. It did a little bit of roof damage, but it wasn't, it wasn't a bad one. But, you know, still roof damage. It rained like crazy yesterday. And I need my grass mowed. I uh, hired somebody to come mow my grass. They were supposed to come tomorrow, but I messaged him yesterday and said, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, all day. Can you please come and mow? ASAP. Because my yard has not been mowed all season, and it's terrible. Of course, the majority of my yard is weeds, which makes it look even worse. Um, but I'm hoping that he'll still show up sometime before it gets dark. I'm really hoping. Because otherwise it's going to rain tomorrow and if it rains at all on Friday I won't, I won't see him until the weekend if I'm lucky. So my neighbors are going to complain. Maybe. I don't have a mower. I have no choice but to hire somebody to come mow my yard. And that was my decision that I made. I don't want to have to maintain a mower and buy fuel and blah, 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 blah. I don't want to have to do all that. It's easier for me to just hire somebody to come and do it every couple of weeks and just have that taken care of. So um, I think that's all I have. I knew this was going to be a long video because I haven't had one in a while. So if you've stuck around this long, I appreciate you so much. Remember to go back and look at my last video about the giveaway. And we need more comments. We need more people commenting. Because um, right now, I think there's like less than 40 comments last I looked. So, you know, lucky for those of, those of you who commented because your odds are greatly increased with, you know, that few comments. Um, but you do have to be a subscriber. So make sure that you're subscribed if you commented. So that's all I've got, you guys. I appreciate you sticking around. I appreciate you watching. Um, I appreciate you commenting. I appreciate all of it. Um... Make sure you stay in prayer because times are getting really, really, really dicey. Times are getting really dicey. Pray for, pray for Israel. Pray for those over in the Middle East. Even pray for the enemy. Pray for those that you don't agree with because God can do miracles and turn those people around. Because he wants, he doesn't want anybody to go to, he doesn't want anybody to um, he doesn't want anybody to escape his kingdom. And that's what's taking so long. He's waiting for more and more people to come to accept Jesus as their savior. He's waiting. So maybe he's waiting for you. All right.
with that being said, I'm going to let you go. Thank you again. Hope to see you next time. Um, we'll do the giveaway. I believe it's the 26th. So it'll be coming up soon. I'll probably do another video between now and then. Hopefully get this wrap finished and share it with you. Um, but have a great rest of your day. And just take care and love each other. And be kind. And crochet or knit your heart out. And enjoy it. Remember, God loves you, Jesus loves you, I love you, and we will see you on the next one, guys. Thank you again. Bye for now.